everyone. Welcome to another episode of Anything and Everything with Donna Lisa. Today I have Robin, Robin sorry, Slonina with Skin City Las Vegas on the show with me today. Hi, Robin. How are you? Hi, everybody. Nice to be here. Awesome. So Robin is with Skin City Las Vegas, which is the premier body painting company here in Las Vegas. You guys also book talent for conventions, events, um, and entertainment, correct? Yes. Over the years uh, since this company was founded, gosh, almost 15 years ago now, we've really evolved from a body painting company into a full-fledged event company. So we pretty nice. much do it all, whatever you can imagine. <laughs> okay, very cool. And some of the models that you do book, are they also models for um, body painting, aside from just models at conventions and large events? Yes, we have a full roster of models and talent. Uh, so some are body painted, some are costumed, some are performers that do hand balancing, acrobatics, silks. Wow. Uh, business partner Ross Gibson is the star of Cirque du Soleil's Mystere. And so he knows all the best talent in town. And so we kind of have like the insider scoop on all the best performers as well as models. Very cool. So tell me a little bit about um, your background and how you actually got started with body painting. Um, I also know you were actually a judge and a producer of um, Art Wars, correct? Or Skin Wars. The TV yeah. show, correct. Okay. Tom, tell me a little bit about how you got started in that industry and how it's um, done for well for you guys here in Las Vegas as far as handling all of these special events here with top models, um, grand openings. I've seen you guys everywhere and your work is amazing. Just wanted to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes. And, you know, we're thrilled to have so many talented artists involved in our company, including your husband, Micah. Yes, yes. And <laughs> with us for a very long time. And, you know, he started out as a painter on canvas. And that's kind of one of the things I really pride myself on is uh, taking established fine artists and really helping them uh, find their calling as body painters as well. So okay. he falls in that category and it's been really fun watching him evolve over the years into a wonderful body painter as well as visual artist. Now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it's body painting isn't something that just kind of happens overnight. It's, um, and he kind of picked it up very quickly. Yeah, I mean, he has the advantage uh, as did I, where I came from a fine art background. So okay. I started art career back in Chicago and I went to the School of the Art Institute of Chicago and I, I entered into college as a painter. So that's what I did, you know, my whole childhood, teenage years, that's the portfolio that I presented to get into art school. Um, but then once I was in art school, I really took everything. Um, the Art Institute really prides itself on being a multidisciplinary curriculum and so you have to take a little bit of everything your freshman year. So I was introduced to the worlds of performance art and sculpture and uh, interactive art. And I think my love really truly uh, is site specific artwork uh, that's interactive, that kind of takes the do not touch sign off of the art and lets people experience it firsthand. And I think that's what I love about body painting too, is that it's so interactive. Um, the models, I think, really feel transformed by the artwork that they're wearing. Uh, they become living canvases and it's awesome to watch them inhabit their art and walk around and, and live in that painted skin. And uh, I think also for the viewer, it's really fun to see um, literally art come to life and become human right in front of their eyes and walk around and perform. And I think that's also another way that I feel I'm bringing art to the masses and just reminding everybody that art doesn't have to be this rarefied thing on a white pedestal in a white gallery, but it can be um, a wonderful, fun part of everyday life. Tell me a little bit about how you got started with Skin City. It started in 2006. Um, how did you come up with that concept? Well, you know, I had been a mural painter in my hometown of Chicago. I ran a mural painting company for over a decade 
and painted all kinds of things, uh, private homes, restaurants, children's hospital, um, just various businesses and things all over the city. And then I became a wandering artist and I lived out of a backpack in Europe for a long time. And then I lived out of a van in the United States. And I sort of supported myself with um, arts residencies, uh, doing interactive okay. sculpture and mural painting, uh, which you know would sort of get me from town to town and uh, you know, train ticket to train ticket in Europe. And so I really kind of lived that life of a vagabond artist for a number of years. And then I ended up stopping through Vegas and I didn't plan on staying, but I had some family <laughs> And, and that's sort of what led to a body painting because I came to it as a mural painter. So I thought, okay, I'll, you know, make my living here as a mural painter. And uh, based on my previous work, I got some pretty big commissions right away. I did the, the huge um, baseball field, Cashman Field. I got hired to do their renovation. And it was the middle of the summer. It was 120 degrees. It was an OSHA work site. So I had to wear oh a hard gosh. hat, long sleeves and pants wow. and steel toed boots. And I was so hot. <laughs> I can imagine. And you had to paint the, all day? Yeah. yeah, and I was on scaffoldings. I was just like, there must be a better way to make a living in the city. <laughs> you know, even indoors here, uh, I'm in the Midwest, we don't have this convention of construction workers uh, putting orange peel on all of the interior wall surfaces. Mm -hmm. So that's something new for me that every wall, you know, in, in the Southwest is textured, right. which is a lot of the work that I used to do, like trompe l'oeil, where you really, you know, do something very photorealistic that could fool your eye into like, you know, somebody's wine cellar, you paint one wall that looks like a vineyard and it really is very convincing even like stere or different striped things where you tape it off with these textured walls, the paint will sneak under the tape. And it, oh. it just really, even indoor mural painting, way more challenging. So outdoor sucked, indoor sucked. So I just felt like, okay, what else can I do in this city? And uh, I actually was volunteering at First Friday uh, very soon after, I think we, within weeks of moving here, I was trying to meet other artists and find out more okay. about the art community. Here. So I volunteered at First Friday and I, I met a, a client who asked me to paint uh, his wife for an upcoming performance they had. I mean, I had done a couple pieces back in Chicago um, with part of the theater company Collaboration that I was okay. a member. I had done some body painted models for some fundraising and things like that. So if you can paint, you can body paint. Um, so I had already known that I was able to, to do it. And then once I started uh, getting jobs, then I quickly shifted from mural painting to body painting. Very cool. And how do you, do you prefer body painting over mural painting? Um, I mean, I, you know, I really like both. I think there's, there's pros and cons to each. Um, now I feel like I'm getting a bit old to be like lugging scaffolding and mm. five gallons. It's a pain around. Right. <laughs> so something nice about how um, intimate body painting is, you know, right. that it's just one-on-one -on -one experience and you really get to know the person that you're painting. And, you know, it's not quite as intensely laborious as mural painting is, but I still okay. do both. I mean, especially during the pandemic, I think myself, like a lot of creatives, um, I have been really forced to like pull out all the crayons in my crayon box nice. and figure out all the different ways to make money. Um, really all of my events, have been canceled. I mean, I yeah. lost eight months of work. And so yeah. now you want me to paint a mural? I will paint a mural. <laughs> right. Speaking so I, of the pandemic, um, how has it affected your business? I mean, you seem to be adjusting okay. Um, I understand you've kind of lost business for the last eight, nine months, but moving forward, what have you done to transition, you know, um, your business during this pandemic? Well, you know, it's been a major loss of work. I mean, yeah. I can't, definitely tried to pivot like many other creatives, but I can't say that I've been able to make up all of the lost wages uh, from the past year. 
Um, however, you know, I've tried my best. I think most freelance artists are hustlers and I've been hustling. <laughs> so I started teaching online classes, um, wow. again, mural painting. So I did a couple murals at the new Circa Hotel and Casino, um, and okay. some murals in the neighborhood. Um, especially when like businesses had their windows boarded mm -hmm. up for local artists to jump in and beautify the area and raise people's spirits and make a little bit of cash. So, you know, that was something that I jumped into. Um, and then, yeah, uh, teaching classes, which is mm -hmm. something I haven't done in a long time. So that's been a really uh, fun element to sort of come out of this pandemic is it really relit my fire for teaching. Right. So are you teaching these classes online or is it limited um, attendance in a studio? How is that working out? I've been doing both. Um, I've okay. definitely been teaching online and that's great because I've been teaching people from all over the country and all over the world even. Um, okay. drawing. And so I have a wonderful teaching method that was my freshman year in college which is, uh, comes from the book Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, which I highly recommend to everybody. Oh. Um, I kind of take you through that workshop and add my own twist on it. I also put a twist on it that's appropriate for children. So I'm teaching kids classes as well. And then I also nice. teach um, person classes in socially distant, masked environments. Um, okay. I've been teaching them in Tivoli Village at Art to Art Gallery. Um, I'm just about to start a new program at, uh, at Mia Moore, uh, which is a beautiful space that another uh, fellow creative has started. Um, so I'm teaching classes there. And then I've also been working with the corner bar management and taught on the roof of the Commonwealth, which is just a gorgeous place on, on Fremont Street. So that's more of a high end class. They have a a mixologist that comes and teaches everybody how to mix oh. beautiful cocktail and then we have okay. a cocktail and we like an acrylic pour painting on the roof with a view of all the neon on Fremont Street and Very fun. so that's been gorgeous they they did put those on hold because of the governor's uh lockdown or okay as he called it yeah um, the but, state pause <laughs> yeah, exactly but they should be starting up again soon so uh yeah so there's opportunities to do live classes, which okay. is just like a one-time fun activity. I generally do a lot of acrylic pour painting for those since that's fun and fun to watch. And also people, even if you have no skills, you can go home with um, a right. great little piece of abstract art. And then I have the online classes, which are a bit more studious, uh, where I really ask people how to draw. And so do they, with these classes, um, what comes with it? Do they get supplies or do they have to purchase their own supplies and materials prior to the class? Yes, we have um, a elaborate supply list with uh, okay. all the links so that people can be totally prepared. And then that way we also are all kind of working with the same thing. So I can say, open up your pencil case, pull this right. out. So it's all very easy. You know, we've made it very one click to get your supplies. Okay. Um, but that's why we do recommend people sign up at, in advance so that they have okay. time to collect. And how else. often are, are you guys doing these classes online um, and in person? Um, I'm doing them in person the first Saturday of every month okay. at Art to Art in Tivoli Village. And then I'm going to start, I think, uh, a third Saturday uh, at Mia Moore. And then um, it's on Sundays at, um, at Corner Bar Management at their beautiful spaces like Park on Fremont and Commonwealth. Okay. So the best way is really just to go to my website, uh, right. robins.com and just check there because I have a calendar and I have all my events uh, listed there. Okay, perfect. Um, and so with you doing these classes online um, and you know, hopefully we do reopen very soon, what are your future plans with the art classes and Skin City Las Vegas? Well, you know, Skin City is very much up in the air right now. Um, I have wanted to pivot to do some socially distant performance pieces. So mm -hmm. I'm in, in talks with some local theaters like Majestic and okay. uh, the 
Cockroach Theater, which is now um, the Vegas Theater, and uh, Sin City Opera, which I think now is the Vegas Opera. Um, so there's been a lot of rebranding going on. Yeah. During the pandemic. <laughs> But yeah, so I'm just in talks with a lot of those really wonderful uh, grassroots theater groups okay. here in about doing um, a very socially distant, safe sort of uh, round robin theater where you come in and you're in a group of 10 and then you're seated, you see a, a quick uh, performance by one of our amazing groups here in town and then you move on to the next, your seats are sanitized and then it kind of just goes uh, in a circle. Oh, fun. Path. So that's something that I, that's sort of a dream that I've been working on. Um, during the pandemic, I also started another TV show called Vegas Unveiled, um, yes. which was a way to just showcase everybody during our downtime. We traveled to, uh, you know, virtually traveled through Zoom uh, to people and just to see what they were doing during the pandemic. There's so much talent here in town. So, you know, right. we saw. Anna Walenda, who's uh, training with her nine-year-old son with her tightrope in the backyard and wow. uh, other artists and creatives and performers and just different projects and things that they were doing uh, during the lockdown, just mm -hmm. to kind of feel spirits and visit and check in with uh, just such a creative city. And it's just yeah. been wonderful to kind of check in with people and see what they're up to. Uh, so I did that for about three months and um, then I got sick. <laughs> oh no. And so I had to take some time off. Uh, my whole family got uh, COVID. My husband, not too okay. bad. My son got it, a pretty strong case of it. So we took a break and right. uh, the torch for the TV show on to some other people. Um, okay. and I also just after that had to really hunker down and figure right. out how to continue to make a living during these challenging times. Wow. So when you were actually quarantining and getting better, recovering from COVID, um, were you still having to homeschool your son, or not homeschool, but do virtual classes with your son at that time? Because he's in school, uh, correct? He is, okay. yes. So we got it really early uh, in March, April. Um, okay. so yes, he has been, uh, he was doing online classes. He's still doing online classes. And uh, we just were home, you know, mm -hmm. for a lot of, we were sick for about six weeks. So, wow. you know, I say like, oh, kids don't get it. Like kids right. get it. They do. Very. We had like 104 fever. Um, we both were just so tired, so long too. You know, that was the thing is you think you're over it and, you know, let him go out and skateboard for 20 minutes and he comes back with a fresh fever. So, you know, we really wow. had rest and and really take it easy so you know it's it's crazy to just especially i think a lot of freelance creatives listening can relate to this but to stop hustling like it's just not in our blood to slow down and not be productive i think that's something that artists we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to just be productive 24 7 and right. just stop and snuggle on the couch and watch endless Naruto episodes with my, <laughs> you know, that's pretty much what we did. That's, well, at least you enjoyed, you know, you spent some time with him. Six weeks is a long time, but I'm glad you guys recovered. Um, you seem to be uh, doing very well. You sound great and you look great. So I'm glad you guys are yes. much healthier now. Yeah. Yeah. We're completely 100% recovered Good. from it. Good. So with that, um, are you, is there a, I'm just curious to know, is there a daily affirmation that you like to start off your day with? Um, yeah, that's such a beautiful question. Um, not so specifically, but what I do constantly through the course of the day find myself doing is uh, practicing gratitude, which mm -hmm. In my mind, gratitude is the secret to happiness. Um, if you can look around and be grateful for small things, like a moment that I find very reflective is like in the shower. Um, <laughs> you know, as like a former traveler, uh, you know, when I was a teenager, I did Peace Corps work in Paraguay and lived in a little village in the middle of the jungle. And then I backpacked around Europe. So for me, even a hot shower is mm -hmm. such a gift, a blessing of our modern world. And, you know, I find 
not taking those little luxuries for granted um, is a wonderful way to stay grounded and to stay joyful. Um, you know, when you're seeing all of these, you know, not just jobs and, and, you know, income dry up, but experiences. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to go to Berlin in April and oh, wow. be a visiting artist with the Museum of Illusions. I had an arts residency lined up. I had a gallery show for Berlin oh. Gallery Week. I had a free stay in the hotel because I'm a signature artist at the Weinmeister in Berlin, which means that I designed a whole hotel room there. So I was going to stay in my room that I designed and, you know, all of that stuff being canceled. Um, it's hard. It's hard on your yeah. spirit. It's hard on everyone. I mean, everyone I think can relate to like, what a weird Christmas we all had that, right. you know, I can't, my mom, my, my kid can't do his monthly grandma sleepovers. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, all of those things that we, I think, take for granted, if you can try during the course of the day just to look around and be grateful for warm right. socks, be for like a snuggly bed at night, you know, be grateful for um, a beautiful view out the window when you're washing the dishes or, you know, just like little things here and there. Um, I just try to really remind myself that no matter what's missing we all are so surrounded by so many small joys and luxuries and that you know in a way don't cost anything and so to try to sort of focus on those I think really helped get me through the pandemic. That's good yeah and just being a little positive during the pandemic I know it was rough for a lot of people in the beginning just because it is a very challenging time but finding something to be positive about helps yeah. Yeah. And it's hard. And, you know, especially with the, with a child, you know, yeah. a lot of have to put on that smiling face for your kid and try to give them some fun, you know, even if it's like a hike out at Red Rock or Mount Charleston, right. which is the closest places uh, in Las Vegas to go really immerse yourself in nature. Um, you know, we definitely tried to keep that going and whatever socially distanced, like for New Year's, we went to the drive-in because that's mm -hmm. a great social. We did his birthday party at the drive-in because we could have friends come and park in separate cars and still have yeah. a bit of community, but from a safe distance. So I think just trying to figure out things to do um, just to keep my son from not feeling like his whole 10th year was like a waste. <laughs> right. I know it's so hard on the children because they really don't understand, especially them being so young, um, you know, but you're doing a good job. I mean, you're keeping him active and, you know, he probably doesn't know any better. You know, he'll grow up and think, oh yeah, we lived through a pandemic and it was actually <laughs> fun because my mom was home all the time. <laughs> right. Yeah. And hopefully we are too crazy. <laughs> right. Right. So um, what inspires you to do what you do? I know, I, I know a ton of artists, um, my husband, one of them, and they just need to constantly go and do things and be busy. Um, what keeps you going? Uh, you know, I've never been one to get like artist block or, you know, how they say like writer's block. Um, I always have a million ideas. I have maybe the opposite problem where I have so many projects that I want to do that it's hard to focus and hone in on, uh, on, on one. Um, so I'm always doing multiple things all at the same time and kind of setting up different stations around the house. You know, I have a studio in my house, but I tend to just take over every room and I have to say, I'm so grateful to my husband and kids because they're tolerant <laughs> of like, finding art projects on the dining room table and the kitchen table and the floor, you know, and the porch. Right. Um, so, you know, I tend to spread out and then just work kind of all different projects at all times. Um, you know, I, one thing that I am driven by is that I'm definitely a populist at heart and I feel like everyone should be able to own original art. Everyone should be able to enjoy original art. So, you know, when I'm trying to make my art, I try to figure out ways to almost do it like assembly line style so that I can get okay. a particular quantity done quickly so that I can lower the price. And one thing I've had so much fun with this pandemic is mini painting. So I'm doing these tiny Ooh. four inch paint 
where I do acrylic pours for the background and then I hand cut stencils and spray paint the stencils and then do some quick little painting, you know, touch up and, you know, I can do paintings um, like 24 at a time uh, right. kind of assembly style. And then I've been selling them at Recycled Propaganda Gallery and I've been selling them at my, um, on my website and on my Instagram. And um, that's a fun way that for, you know, they average around $25 with a little easel and you can have a piece of original art, you know, in your hand or something that I think anybody can afford. So, you know, I think I really try to not just think about like my own inspiration and my own fulfillment, but mm -hmm. where the paintings will land and where my artwork will land and who will see it. And, you know, whether it's an interactive sculpture or a painting or a mural, um, I think my inspiration really does come from the viewer. I want to okay. give that viewer a particular experience um, and a message or some joy or, you know, maybe just a little tiny bit of uh, a little burst of enlightenment if they, you know, see something in, in the painting that speaks to them. So I think that's really my inspiration is just thinking about the viewer. Nice. I like that you actually you kind of reshifted things and now you're offering mini paintings. Whereas in the past, you probably wouldn't have even thought about that. You know, you're so used to painting on a large canvas or, you know, a huge wall. Um, and with the pandemic, with people being out of work and not being able to afford the, you know, those top dollar prices for paintings, you're allowing them to have a piece of original art at a, you know, um, an affordable price, which is nice. Yeah, and they've gone all over. I mean, I've shipped them to Australia, to the UK, all over wow. the country, Canada. And it's so fun to um, get pictures back. You know, a right. lot of them, so I would write a little gift message and a little note and send it off. And uh, just getting pictures back of people opening up these little oh. baby paintings, and, you know, on Instagram, sending me messages like, you know, look what came in the mail. And, you know, whether it's, it was a surprise oh. or, or a fan opening it, it's just so fun to see people enjoying the work. And so mm -hmm. that is just, that's what more could you ask from artwork than to spread right. a little joy. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Robin, for sharing, um, you know, what you've been doing during the pandemic to stay busy. Um, anybody interested in your future art classes can go to your website for more information. Uh, RobinSloNina.com, correct? Yes, SloNina. So it's S-L-O-N-I-N-A, RobinSloNina.com. And you Perfect. can also follow me across all uh, social media platforms at okay. Robin. Lamina, I am pretty easy to find. <laughs> yeah, well, I appreciate you taking time out today to chat. And, um, you know, hopefully when everything starts to open up a bit, a little bit more, we can, I can start going to see you paint again. And hopefully Micah can paint with you. <laughs> I think the yeah. last, the last event we did together, um, you folks actually did a, um, an event for me at the mansion, Mansion 54 at the time. And it was for a chamber event and that was in February. And then who would have ever thought a month later we were shut down. So. I know one of the last events we did. Mm -hmm. you now I have one project coming up thanks to your husband because um, I don't think a lot of people know that he was a semi-pro athlete. Yes. Time, and he uh, gifted my son with a snowboarding helmet. So we are oh, going to stand it spray paint it. So that is our one of art project. Thanks to Micah Very that we're cool. doing here. <laughs> You're going to have to post that photo when it's done on Instagram so I can see it. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Robin. You have um, a good afternoon and I'll see you again soon, hopefully. Thanks so much, Donna. It's always a pleasure to see you and talk to you. Thank you. Same here. Bye-bye.